the little gray cells, they will always catch the criminal. Agatha Christie's Poirot. From the thrill pack pages of Agatha Christie's unforgettable stories of corpses, clues, and crime, Mutual now brings you, complete with bowler hat and magnificent mustache, your favorite detective, Hercule Poirot. Starring Harold Huber in Rendezvous with Death. If you'll wait just one moment, sir, we'll have a place for you. Mm, but a lot for me, monsieur. Your cafe enjoys such a great popularity. I do not see an unoccupied table. For you, Mr. Farrow, there's always a table. You see, I've had one set up for you right next to the dance floor. Uh, this way, sir. Uh, we haven't seen much of you lately. It is true. I have been busy getting all my affairs in order. I intend to take a cruise on your Great Lakes in two weeks' time. In that way, I shall have a vacation and observe something of your great country at the same time. Yes, we'll miss you, but I hope you enjoy it. Here we are. Merci bien. You're alone, I take it? Oui. Sometimes, you see, I prefer to sit on the side and observe the behavior of others. Look out on the dance floor, monsieur. You would expect to read pleasure in every face, eh? And yet, it is not so. Some of those faces are so bored, some vacant-looking, some actually unhappy. Ah, but this couple which approaches, they are different, no? Eh? Oh, uh, Miss Belfort and Mr. Doyle. Yes, they're different. If they're in love. Oh, I see. That explains it. The young lady's flushed face, her laughter... Yes, and that's something else in her eyes, eh? Ah, she cares too much, that little one. Eh bien, monsieur, if you will bring me the wine list. Uh, for you, Mr. Poirot, I have something very special you see. Darling, you dance divine. Thank you, Jackie. Oh, pardon me, sir. Not at all, monsieur. And you're by far the handsomest man in this room. Oh, it's, it's just that you have no eyes for anyone else. Oh, no, Simon, you're too modest. Darling, hmm? what are you thinking about? Oh, well, that opportunity you wangled for me handling the Ridgeway properties. Do you really think Linda Ridgeway will give me a trial? I know she will, dear. Linda's my friend, and I told her all about you. She won't let us down. I might let her down. Nonsense. She may be fabulously rich and glamorous, but she's as easy to please as any ordinary person. It's just the right job for you. As a matter of fact, I think it is. I really haven't any doubts as to my ability, and I intend to make good for your sake. Oh, darling. <laughs> We'll wait three months to make sure you won't be fired. And then... And then we'll get married. Oh, it'll be so wonderful, Jackie, won't it? I wonder. You really care as much as I do. Don't be absurd, Jackie. I wonder. Oh, well, that's done. Here we are, Mr. Poirot. Just three bottles left. You see, monsieur? The old, old story, eh? One who loves and one who permits himself to be loved. Me, I wonder too. A pardon, mademoiselle. What is... Oh. On a cruise, it is permissible to introduce oneself, n'est-ce pas? And though we have barely left the dock, I... Yes, of course, but, uh... But I... you would rather be alone, eh? The last time I saw you, Mademoiselle Belfort, you did not look unhappy. Really, I don't think we've ever... Forgive me, Mademoiselle. First, I present myself. I am Hercule Poirot. How do you do? The name means nothing to you? No, I'm afraid not. Eh yeah, bien. It is my business, Mademoiselle Belfort, to remember names and faces. I sat at the table next to you and your handsome young man at the Café du Fort two weeks ago. Richard, the maître d'hôtel, told me oh, who you were. I see. Also, I, I must confess, I, I could not help overhearing some of your conversations. That is why I was so glad to see you again. You and Monsieur Doyle, you are perhaps here on your honeymoon? Monsieur Doyle is here. And he's on his honeymoon. But it's not with me. Ma foi, this is incredible. Yes. I would have thought so, too. If you heard our... Conversation you must have heard us talking about my best friend, Linda Ridgeway. Ah, yes, it was through your efforts. Monsieur Doyle obtained a position in her employ. That's right. And after she saw him, she decided she wanted him. Not as an employee, but as a husband. Mm, but the young man. Oh, Simon's weak. Linda's not only beautiful, but very rich. If the combination was irresistible. 
It took her just one week. But in that case, what are you doing here? I don't know, Mr. Poirot. Seems as though I'm just driven to following them everywhere. Maybe seeing me constantly will spoil their happiness. Maybe Simon will realize what a fool he's been. Maybe I'll do something. Well, Mamsel, Mamsel, do not even think such thoughts. How did you know what I was thinking? Ah, there is desperation in your eyes, ma pauvre petite. But you are too young, and I hope too intelligent to do anything for, for which you will be sorry later. Don't worry, Mr. Poirot. If I do anything, somebody else will be a lot sorrier. <laughs> Come on, Linda, let's go forward to the sun deck. You could use a burn, you know. You look so pale. Oh, it's wonderful here on the ship, Simon, away from her. For the first time in days, I feel free. So glad, darling. Why should she persecute me? Why does she follow me? Follow us, wherever we go, just staring and staring. I couldn't help it, Simon, could I? I couldn't help loving you, and you're loving me. Jackie's a queer sort, Linda. She'll get over it. Simon! Oh, no, no, not again. What is it, Linda? There, by the rail, Jackie. Good Lord. Simon, I'll go mad, I know it. She's driving me mad. Linda, get hold of yourself. She's coming this way. I'm going back. No, no, we've got to face her. We've got to show her we're not afraid. Yes, dear, I guess you're right. Hello, Linda. We seem always to be running into each other. How are you? Hello, Simon. You're looking well. Though, not as well as last week. Oh, Jackie, we... Didn't expect to see you here. <laughs> Didn't you? I thought I'd surprise you. Simon. Oh, Simon, what can we do? You're Mr. Poro. At your service, madame. Perhaps you know who I am. Yes, madame Doyle, I have heard your name. I know exactly who you are. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Mr. Poirot, I've heard a great deal about you, and I know that you're very clever. I need someone to help me. And I think you're the man to do it. Well, you are very amiable, madame. It concerns a certain young lady, a Miss Jacqueline Belfort. Oui, madame, I know that. You see, I witnessed the little scene that occurred on deck this morning. Mr. Poirot, that girl is persecuting me. It's got to stop. Well, what do you suggest? I'm sure I don't know. There must be some kind of legal action one can take. Me, I do not know of any. So long as she does not use insulting language or threaten you with bodily harm, you, you cannot prevent her from, from appearing in the same public places as you frequent. But this is ridiculous. Do we have to be subjected to this subtle torture wherever we go? It, it's intolerable. I sympathize with you, madame. Especially since I imagine you have not often had to put up with things, eh? Of course, you can always leave when she turns up. But that would be running away as though... As though... Exactly, madame. As though you were guilty. Eh? What? Yes, madame. That is why you cannot tolerate Miss Belfort. You have a feeling of guilt. How dare you? Uh, you are beautiful, madame. You are rich, you are clever, and you have charm. You could have restrained that charm when you met Monsieur Doyle, but you chose not to. And so you, who had everything, took everything from your friend. Mr. Poirot, let's not talk about the past. The question is, what can be done now? I, Madame Doyle, can do nothing. Jackie has threatened us. She threatened to... Well, to kill us both. I see. I, I did not know that. Then you will act for me. No, Madame. I have already spoken with Miss Belfort. I'm afraid there is nothing I can do in that direction. But I must tell you this, Madame. The situation is full of difficulty and danger for all three of you. <laughs> Mrs. Doyle? What? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, Miss Robeson. That's stupid of me. I have got a say. Yes, I thought you must have. A queen from Dummy, please. Uh, Mr. Doyle, uh, waiting for your play. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, Pennington. I wouldn't let her upset my game, darling. Just let her sit over there and stay. The last four tricks are mine. Ace of clubs and three trumps. Ah, that's game and rubber. Well played, Miss Robeson. Thank you. Well, I guess I'll turn in. I'm coming, darling. Not just yet, Linda. I think I'll have a drink first. All right, Simon. Good night, Miss Rosen. Good night, Mr. Pennington. I'll take a few turns around the deck. Good, Good night, Doyle. Good night. Good night, Miss Rosen. Good night. Did I leave my bag here, Mr... 
Oh, yes, that it is. Uh, Miss Robeson, don't go to bed. Please don't. I feel like making a night of it. Stuart. Oh, yes, miss. Another double scotch. I'd uh, love to stay, Miss Bell. Oh, but... sit down. We girls must stick together, you know. I think you ought to go to bed. Everyone else has, and except Mr. Doyle over there. Oh, yes, Mr. Doyle. He was a man, and he done her... That's here you are, miss. Thanks, Stuart. Well, here's to crime. Miss mm. Wilkson, Cornelia, tell me about yourself. There's nothing to tell, really. You're a happy sort of person, aren't you? I wish I were like you. Do you? I suppose everyone considers the next person a little happy. I, I remember... Simon, uh, ring the bell. I want another drink. The stewards have gone to bed. It's after midnight. I tell you, I want another drink. You've had quite enough drinks. What you? business is it of yours? None. What's the matter, Simon? You afraid? I really think I should go. Oh, home. no. Stay, Cornelia. You know what Simon's afraid of? He's afraid I'm going to tell you the story of my life. Oh. Well, you I... see, he and I were once engaged. Really? Yes. This is a very sad story. Go to bed, Jackie. You're drunk. Afraid of a scene, aren't you? Better get out of here quickly. Because I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk a lot. I told you, Simon, I'd kill you rather than see you go to another woman. Jackie, get home. You didn't think I meant it, did you? You're so wrong. I've only been waiting. You're my man. Do you hear? I'll shoot you like a dog. Jackie, no, put that down. dirty dog you are. Jackie. Don't say anything about this to anyone, especially to Linda. Where's the gun? She kicked it under the sofa. Oh, Lord. I wish I were dead. I'll kill myself. I'd be better off dead. Miss Robeson, get her to her cabin. <laughs> Pennington will help you. Stay with her until the nurse gets there. <laughs> Pennington, after you send the nurse for Jackie, bring the doctor here for me. I don't like the way my leg's bleeding. <laughs> What is he? Uh, beg pardon, sir. The captain would like to see you in his cabin right away. Not for us. Must be a matter of great importance. What has happened? Mr. Doyle, sir. He was shot last night by Miss Belfort. Blood, and it has happened. Yes, sir. And something else has happened. Something worse. Indeed. Yes, sir. Sometime last night, Mrs. Doyle was murdered. <laughs> Doctor said death was instantaneous. She was killed between 12 and 1. Bullet entered behind the left ear and lodged in the brain. We, oui, we. Oui. A bullet from a small caliber gun held at very close range. Yes, but no one heard the shot. Oh, that is not surprising, monsieur. The explosion would be scarcely noticeable above the sound of the engines. She was probably asleep when the murderer entered. Ah, to destroy such beauty, one must have a very powerful motive, eh? I presume nothing has been touched. That's right. The room is just as we found it. Observe, Captain. Here, on the floor. Hmm? Hmm, a compact with the initial J on it. Precisely. The letter J. I must inform you, Captain, that Madame Doyle had a very dangerous enemy on board this ship. Mademoiselle Jackie Belfort. Belfort? Do you mean to stand there and tell me, Poirot, that this Belfort woman shot Simon Doyle, then murdered Linda Doyle and left her compact on the floor? Why, that's incredible. Is it, monsieur? Perhaps. Perhaps no. Mademoiselle Belfort is high-strung and nervous. She is a uh, type who might make such a mistake. Well, then what are we waiting for? Why don't we go and get her? Evidence, monsieur, evidence. For example, the gun. Where is it? Not a trace of it, Mr. Poirot. And the bullets. The bullet in Doyle's leg and the one in the woman's head. The doctor says he's almost positive they came from the same gun. You see, after Doyle was taken to the infirmary, he sent Pennington back to get the gun from under the sofa. And? It's gone. Ah. 
Mm. What's that you're doing? I am merely observing these two bottles of nail polish. One is marked red plum, the other rosebud. Madame Doyle wore the red plum last night. Mm. Oh, but these rosebuds. Sacre no, the odor is atrocious. It smells not of a rose, but of vinegar. Yeah, that's all very interesting, Mr. Paro, but we've got a murder here on our hands. Are you making any headway? <laughs> oh, mon Dieu, I see you expect miracles from Hercule Poirot. I do not deal in them, monsieur. All I can do is employ the little gray cells. Oh, and what do they tell you? Many things, monsieur. Things which the eyes alone do not tell. For example, your eyes, without a doubt, have observed this jewel case, which is just a fraction of an inch open. Well? Well, I ask myself, why should it be open? Therefore, I lift the lid and discover... Great Scott. Exactly. That the priceless string of pearls Madame Doyle was wearing last night is gone. <laughs> Good morning, nurse. How is Mademoiselle Belfort? She's still sleeping. I see. You gave her something, eh, for the nerves? Yes, I gave her a morphine injection. She was so unstrung last night, I was afraid she might do something terrible. It looks as if she has. What do you mean, Captain? I mean that after shooting Mr. Doyle in the card room, this pretty little spitfire up and murdered Mrs. Doyle. Mrs. Doyle? Murdered? That's right. And you think she did it? No, 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 Mademoiselle. We do not think anything as yet. We are merely investigating but there is an abundance of evidence pointing to Miss Belfort. But, but when could she have done it? You have been with her all the time. Why, well, yes, she hasn't searched in the room since I came on at 12.30 last night. You are quite sure, Mademoiselle? I'm positive. I gave her the hypo as soon as I came in, and she hasn't stirred out of this room since. I see. And you, nurse, perhaps you took a turn about the deck. I beg your pardon, sir. When I'm in charge of a patient, I don't go out strolling. Well, forgive me, Mademoiselle. I, I did not mean to offend Hello, Monsieur le Capitaine. What do you say now, eh? It begins to seem Mademoiselle Belfort may not be guilty after all. Why not? She might have done it before the nurse got here. Maybe as soon as Simon Doyle was carried out of the card room, she sneaked back, got the gun from under the sofa, slipped into Linda Doyle's room and killed her. Yes, that is possible. There may have been time. But tell me, Mademoiselle, when you arrived here, was Miss Belfort alone? Why, no. Miss Robson was with her. She'd brought her down from the card room in a terrible condition. She couldn't have left her alone. Confounded, I don't understand this. If that's true, this girl has a perfect alibi. She was in the card room when Linda Doyle left, and she was with Miss Robes at every minute after that until the nurse took over. We, oui, I am beginning to think we must exclude Miss Belfort from our calculations. You mean... Well, but how about all the evidence against her? The compact, and the fact that her gun was used. It is possible, Captain, that someone else wished to point suspicion at Miss Belfort. Someone who saw what occurred in the card room, someone who had heard her threats. Miss Robeson was there, and of course Mr. Pennington came right in, but... Oh, that's ridiculous. What possible motive could either have? You are forgetting the matter of the pearls. Oh, the pearls, of course. I'd forgotten about them. Oh, come on. We'll search Pennington's cabin. An excellent idea, but first we will have a few words with Mademoiselle Robson. You see, Captain, I have observed something about that young lady that intrigues me very much. Okay, if that's how you want it. Oh, nurse, let me know when Miss Belfort wakes up. Yes, Captain. Well, what gets me, Mr. Parlow, is what happened to the gun. Where has it disappeared? Well, that is simple. It was thrown overboard. But the question is, why has it disappeared? What do you mean? If the murderer was at such pains to point suspicion at Miss Belfort, why did he not leave Miss Belfort's gun in Madame Doyle's room? Well, that's... Oh, hello, Doctor. How's Mr. Doyle? Well, the bone is badly fractured. I'm afraid of an infection. He's running a little fever. Oh, that is a pity. Uh, doctor, tell me, how long after the shooting of Simon Doyle did you and Pennington arrive in the card room? I guess about five minutes. He must have been in agony while he waited. He could not move? Doyle? Out of the question... With that leg, he couldn't have dragged himself two foot. And certainly not without leaving a trail of blood. You can count him out, Poirot. Apparently. That unfortunate one, his alibi is written in blood. <laughs> Miss Robson, will you tell me just once more exactly what occurred last night? Well, as I said, everyone had left the card room except the four of us who were playing bridge... And Jacqueline Belfort, who was sitting off in the corner, drinking rather heavily. Then the game broke up and Madame Doyle left. That's right. Mr. Pennington went out at the same time to stroll on deck, he said. That left Mr. Doyle, Jackie, and myself. Then there was a scene. Jacqueline shot Mr. Doyle and kicked the gun under the sofa. I called Mr. Pennington in and together we got Jackie down to a cabin. Now, Mademoiselle, this is very important. Are you sure that you were with Miss Belfort every moment from the time you left the card room until the nurse arrived? Yes, I'm positive. And after that, mademoiselle? What do you mean? 
You did not by any chance go back to the card room and fetch the gun? What? Do you think I... I merely ask the question, Mamsel. Did you? Certainly not. What did you do? I went to my cabin. And you stayed there all night? Why, yes. You are quite sure, Mamsel. You did not go to Linda Doyle's room at any time during the night? No, I went right to sleep. You believe me, don't you? Miss Holson, a person has been murdered on this ship, and another one seriously wounded. I can only believe what I see. What do you mean? This large container of dusting powder on your vanity table, mademoiselle. I am wondering why so much of it has spilled. Oh, I... I, I guess I was pretty jittery last night. My hand must have shaken. I see. Then you will not mind if I turn the box over? What? What for? Mademoiselle, do not think me harsh. I have been observing you in the dining room for several days, and I know that you are a sick person. Forgive my saying so, but you are mentally ill. You know that? Oui. I have seen you slip into your purse a pair of silver tongues and several other objects. I am sure you are aware, Miss Robson, that you are a kleptomaniac? Yes, I know. I can't help it, Mr. Poirot. I've, I've tried. Oh, I've tried terribly hard to break the habit. But when I get the impulse to take something, I, I can't resist it. Well, it is a condition, mademoiselle, which cannot be fought. It must be cured. The pearls are in the powder box. I couldn't sleep during the night. I, I kept thinking about the necklace Linda Doyle had been wearing. About two o'clock, I got out of bed and slipped down the corridor and into Mrs. Doyle's room. The pearls were in their case on the dressing table. I took them and came back. But I didn't kill her. I didn't. I had no reason to. I thank you, mademoiselle. And now, if you please, I will take these pearls. I'm ready to be turned over to the captain. No, mademoiselle. No one need know of this. I shall merely announce that the pearls have been found. Oh, thank you, Mr. Poirot. You... You're too good. Au contraire, mademoiselle, you are too unfortunate. I'm glad Mr. Pennington didn't find out. He, he'd have made it very difficult for me. Mr. Pennington? Well, what has he to do with the necklace? Didn't you know? Mr. Pennington is, was the trustee of Mrs. Doyle's estate. Sapristi. That gives one furiously to think. Doctor says Doyle's coming along all right, huh? I am pleased to hear that, Captain. Where do we stand, Mr. Poirot? That's what I want to know. We don't seem to be making any headway. I'd like to solve this thing before we talk. You may calm yourself, Captain. The case is solved. You mean you know who killed Linda Doyle? We, I know. Ah, here's the infernal. Hello, Captain. Uh, hello, Mr. Doyle. Feeling a little better? We have lots, thank you. Mr. Poirot here says he solved the case. Have you? Oui, monsieur. I know who murdered your wife. No, sit still, Mr. Pennington. This will interest you. Uh, thank you, I... I'd like to stay. Who did it, Mr. Poirot? It couldn't have been Jackie. Mr. Pennington's been telling me the facts. Monsieur Pennington is right. Miss Belfort did not commit the murder. Understand me, she has the capacity for it, that little one. And there is much evidence pointing to her. But she did not have the opportunity. Therefore, she is eliminated. I've sent for her. I feel partly responsible for what happened last night. I want her to know I understand. Oh, that is thoughtful of you, monsieur. Though your consideration comes a bit late, eh? Poirot, who did it? Well, let us see. If it was not Miss Belfort, then we must assume it was someone else who knew where the gun was. But who could that be? Miss Robeson and Mr. Pennington. And, of course, Doyle here. And what are we looking for, eh? A person who knows where the gun is, who knows that Miss Belfort has threatened Madame Doyle and will therefore be suspected, who has an opportunity and who has a motive. What motive could Miss Robeson have? I do not know, Monsieur Pennington, but I know what motive you would have. I? We, oui, Monsieur. You were the trustee of Linda Ridgeway's estate. She was still a minor. You had no concern. But suddenly she marries. And you find that you will have to account. Uh, what about it? My accounts are in perfect order. I do not think so, monsieur. I took the liberty of looking through your papers. If you had no concerns, why did you draw up all those documents which would clear you of all responsibility? You hoped Linda Doyle would sign them, Nesta. Yes. Did you not, monsieur? Yes, I did. But she wouldn't sign them. She was too good a businesswoman. Uh -huh. I was a little short... I'd speculated with some of her funds. But I was making it up. I only needed a little more time. But you didn't get more time, so you killed her. No, I didn't kill her, I swear. Simon. Come in, Jackie. Simon, I must have been insane. I'm a horrible, jealous beast. I don't deserve to live. It's all right, Jackie. I understand. You understand? You don't hate me? No, Jackie. Everything was messed up. We were all responsible. You and I and Linda. We won't ever see each other again, but... I want you to know I bear no malice. 
Thank you, Simon. That'll help. I suppose you've heard about Linda. Yes. Horrible. I feel responsible for that, too. No, no, don't feel that way. Mr. Poirot knows who didn't do it. He knows who did. Do you, Mr. Poirot? Oui, mademoiselle. It is very simple. From the very beginning, there was one question that perplexed me. Why did the murderer point the finger of suspicion at you, even to the extent of leaving your compact, and then take your gun away with him? It would have been more convincing if he had left it. Well, what's the answer? There can be only one answer, Captain. The murderer took the gun away because he needed it. Needed it? What for? Well, to shoot someone. But no one was shot after Mrs. Doyle's murder. You are wrong, Captain. Someone was shot. Monsieur Simon Doyle. Oh, no, no. No, Mr. Poirot. You've got it wrong. Simon was shot before Mrs. Doyle was killed. Let us say, Miss Belfort, rather, that Simon was shot at before Mrs. Doyle was killed. But he was not hit. The bullet struck a table as it was intended to. I have but a few minutes ago recovered it. But that's impossible, Mr. Poirot. I saw him a second later. He was writhing on the floor in agony. One can pretend to writhe. But the blood. His handkerchief was clutched over his leg and it was saturated with red. We oui, red ink, monsieur. Red ink mixed with nail polish. And smelling very distinctly of vinegar, as all ink does. Mr. Faro. Oui, mon capitaine. This is all beyond me. Please explain what happened. Why, it is very simple, monsieur. Two people decide to commit a murder. They prepare for it a perfect alibi. At the prearranged signal, Miss Belfort picks a fight and pretends to shoot Monsieur Doyle in the leg. He falls to the floor, apparently injured and bleeding. Miss Belfort is taken away, and Monsieur Doyle is free for five minutes. He snatches the gun from under the sofa, slips down to his wife's room, murders her, and returns to the castle. Then, and this required great courage, he shoots himself in the leg and hurls the gun overboard through the open porthole. Voila! And a minute later, when I came back with the doctor, his leg really was fractured. And he has the perfect alibi. He actually cannot move. Hello, Monsieur Doyle. You are very silent. But your face, it is very expressive. You're a devil, Poirot. It would have worked with anybody. If Simon! You no! No, we didn't! It is no use, mademoiselle. You love this young man deeply, but you love wealth even more, eh? Enough to kill for it. And now, you see, you and your lover, too, have a rendezvous with death. Be sure to listen at the same time next week when Agatha Christie, America's favorite mystery writer, brings you her favorite detective, Hercule Poirot, in The Deadest Man in the World. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. (laughs) 